Welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Penny Hay. I'm a reader in Creative Teaching and Learning, a research fellow um, at Bath University. And for those of you that are not in the UK, that's uh, Southwest England. And I'm also director of research for a charity that is now called House of Imagination, but it used to be called Five by Five. Um, but we renamed it in honour of Ken Robinson, who was our patron for 20 years. So I'm just going to share my screen and hope that everything works. Um, and I, I want to focus really on the idea that uh, the arts are transformational in our lives. So I've kind of put together a story, if you like, um, of what has really influenced my thinking, but also witnessing the creativity of children and young people. So I was just explaining to Sophie that we work with not 25, but predominantly three to 14, but we, we are widening our remit all the time. And a lot of our projects involve families as well. So um, I'm a great fan of Bob and Roberta Smith, mm -hmm. and I believe that art is a human right and that every child, no matter what their background or circumstance, should have access to the arts. And I'm also committed to the idea of arts being an authentic experience. So I was a primary teacher and worked in special education, um, and now in higher education, but I specialised in school refusers, I don't like that term, but children who are disaffected from their curriculum. And this um, young person has recently won a BAFTA. So I think what I'm saying is that we must not underestimate children, young people, and the power of the arts to be transformational. So after teaching in the Southwest, hopping up to Glasgow for a while to work in, during the year of culture, I moved to London to teach at the Institute of Education. I was very fortunate to work with Sheila Berman, uh, Sheila Berman, um, when I was teaching in working alongside primary and secondary schools. And on the right, working then for seven years at Goldsmiths, working with wonderful people like Inka Shonabare. I was also fortunate before Tate Modern Open to work on the artist teacher scheme and the learning link and thinking about the way that children um, are immersed in the arts, but particularly contemporary art practice and how that informs the whole of their lives. So that was a, a beautiful moment. I moved back to Bath to have a child and then really, um, well, in fact, I took her over to Italy with me, really thinking about the practice in Reggio Emilia and how that informed my thinking about every child being competent and creative from the moment of birth. And the idea that children can find and follow their fascinations. So here a child being curious about her shadow in the playground. But I wondered that that might be the same kind of motivation that Christian Bartansky was having when he was setting up the idea of the kind of light and dark and shadow in the Arnolfini gallery. So our charity, as I said, 20 years ago, set up the idea that we were inviting children, young people into environments of inquiry. So here on the left, bringing the outside inside and on the right thinking about how big does a map have to be to be inside it. So I was very interested in children's deep philosophical questioning. So we set up the concept of a studio, a house of imagination now, as you can see Sir Ken in the middle, he visited our uh, university, but each of the images shows a studio space where children, young people and my students at the university and families are working alongside each other to explore concepts, ideas, possibilities, and in many different modalities. So one of my favorite times in the year is bringing children up to the art college to see the um, degree show. And on the bottom left of secondary school, who are in a Skype conversation between uh, Ruthlingson, Radstock, near Bath, uh, Serbia, Spain, and Rwanda, talking about what is school, uh, what is learning, what is teaching. And the middle bottom image, um, Dottie, she really was called Dottie, in the gallery in Bath where we took over the space and children from year one to year five were exploring endless possibilities through using mathematical investigations. So one of our signature projects that was born about 11 years ago, and sadly the tall head teacher on the right is no longer with us, she had cancer sadly, but she was um, a key protagonist with Kate Cross, the director of The Egg in the Pink Skirt, and myself, thinking about the idea of school being somewhere else. So could, why couldn't school be at The Egg? 
how could we co-design learning with our students, our artists, the children, immersed in creative inquiries in the city, thinking about following their fascinations. So we use the city or explore the city as a campus for learning. And the children are involved in individual and uh, collaborative inquiries, really thinking about what it is to be a learner. So they are protagonists of their own learning. We, they are in the shop, in the, in the tech department, in the studio, around the city, all safeguarding in place, watching plays in the theatre and expressing their ideas in a hundred languages. So that phrase came from Reggio Media, but has really informed my thinking. So that inviting children to um, explore their ideas here in Every Child Has a Reflective Journal and going to see a play, responding in collage to the beautiful seats in the theatre, but on the right, then retelling a story, I Wish It Was a Mountain by Toby Thompson. And wherever we are, we're, um, we're thinking about the ideas that are, uh, we're curious about. So going to the woods or going to the art school to, to find out about how clay works. And the children responding to the city and the environment, they are stewards of the environment. So co-designing here, a painting where they're curating the blue and green of the city. And as you know, Bath is a landscape city um, based on our beautiful hillsides. And taking children out of their school to co-design or co-curate curate a gallery of learning in the local shops, in the local shopping centre, in the egg, in the lift, in the top floor, so that their parents and carers can come and see their learning and that their learning is then made visible. So these kind of ideas really inform my own um, doctoral studies and my PhD focused on uh, children's identity as artists and the role of the adult alongside the child in supporting um, their concept, their self-concept of being an artist. So here, uh, one of the children who's really fascinated with mountains and monsters, um, and that permeated his, I worked with the same group of children for five years. I should have said really here that this girl was particularly interested in pattern and landscape. Um, and Jay, not his real name, was really fascinated by mountains and monsters and it kept appearing in his work. So we asked ourselves, you know, what does a creative school look like? Um, here working alongside uh, Richard Long, why not invite him in? Um, and Roger, who's the steel pan teacher, the families having workshops, documenting the children's learning. And as I say, everybody having a sketchbook, no matter what their age and the adults as well. So we ask ourselves next, so what, okay, so what could a creative city look like? What could a creative village look like, a creative town? And how could we make that visible? What would be, what would it be to have a city of imagination? So now it's in its seventh year, or eighth year actually, thinking about Andrew Grant, who co-designed the Gardens by the Bay in Singapore. He's a local parent working alongside us as a team so here my students at the bottom right, PGC students, just dressed up as actors working with the House of Fairy Tales, our design students co-designing dens for children and really thinking about the idea of bringing nature, creativity and imagination into the city to have a conversation. So we all recognize our own creativity and our own imagination and our collective imagination to see things differently. So here the children working with architecture students to design pop-up um, houses of imagination and the bottom left, um, our design students making drawing machines for the children to play with. The bottom right, a, a beautiful um, cardboard maze inviting the community to come and draw and play. And the top right, a, a, a forest, a Claire Day designed a, a, a forest of a thousand trees alongside families. So the kind of immersive possibilities, so here underneath the egg in, in the um, darkened room, exploring the notion of bioluminescence with Shai Akram from the Royal College of Art and thinking about the idea that, you know, of activism, room 13, inviting a conversation with the children about saving the planet, um, Plymouth College of Art, setting up propositions for change with the community. 
working alongside the Royal United Hospital, thinking about now they've designed an eco garden. So importantly, the key themes around creative placemaking and here that the architect Piers Taylor worked with the community to design a, a beautiful beacon of hope as a nod to the homeless in the city in front of an iconic Holborn Museum. So I think that the key themes around um, climate change and activism and thinking about children and young people's voice and really making a difference. I mean, I'm a big fan of Greta and the idea, this was a day when Greta came to Bristol um, and Bath and thinking about the idea that we can, we need to see the change, we need to be the change we need to be, whatever the quote is from Gandhi. And so I suppose at the moment with COVID and responding to um, home learning, we've sent out loads of different beautiful creative learning invitations and set up bubbles of opportunities for children to focus on nurture and nature and play and think about the idea that um, we are offering families most impacted by COVID opportunities to see their creativity. So with the experience of loss and anxiety and self-harm and um, grief, we've tried to respond designing really beautiful creative adventures. And here James, um, James Baldwin, who's uh, an artist who's experienced in trauma-informed work, co-designing a, a, a website and a, well, a digital and an analog experience for teenagers so that they can be in control of their own narrative. I think it's got at least 11 possibilities. I can share that later. And then last year, because we had to pivot to a digital platform, our Forest of Imagination uh, went online, which actually really expanded the possibilities for engaging not only a local community, but an international community. So we work with artists in Zimbabwe, um, in Berlin, with a Lafayette Lyson studio, designing a beautiful mirror maze with Alf Coles and Field and Clegg Bradley Studios. And we teamed up with Ted, Count, Ted Countdown. So 101020 responding to the climate change emergency, the ecological emergency. And just recently, over the last few months, we've um, we've been brought into a relationship with uh, the BBC Creative R&D. There's a new adaptive podcast in Bristol. So I wanted young people to metaphorically be able to fall down a rabbit hole to connect more deeply to the natural world. So we've now got a collective of about um, eight, 12 artists in across art form and across disciplines, creatives and tech wizards, working on the idea of adaptive podcasts and binaural sound and bringing in a kind of narrative around storytelling and nature. And just to end, and then I'll open up for questions, we're also working in India again, impacted by COVID because of not being able to travel, but being able to support them digitally. There's a lab in Mumbai, in Bombay, where there is a, a space based on the idea of it's it coincidentally called Lab 13, but um, it's because it's in the area in Mumbai called Daravi, which is actually compound 13. And together with the young people and artists in residence, we're looking at an experimental living curriculum that's based on waste work and survival. So reimagining waste here on the left, we're showing this back in our university to engage students and uh, teachers and lecturers in that dialogue. But on the right in the space in Mumbai where the children are using uh, and expressing and transforming materials, but really thinking about waste and the city as a classroom, thinking about how that they can respond to their local community and repurpose and reimagine those possibilities for themselves. So I believe that art is a human right. And I believe that the arts have an amazing transformational power to inform all of our lives. So I'm going to stop sharing there. <laughs>